Hey, you guys, it is Jim. So we're here in between the matinee and evening performance. This beautiful woman is E. Faye Butler. And this is theater makeup. Can you see it? Of course you can. Well, that's so funny. She says it is, but we see her in this all the time, even when she arrives at the theater, Jim, right? Is that wrong? Stop it. That's all right. Jordan wears the exact same makeup behind the camera and stuff. You look fabulous, honey. <laughs> and she is Motormouth Mabel in our production of Hairspray. Congratulations. Thank you so very much. Like, thank you, thank everybody you. is digging it. It's an amazing show, mm -hmm. and you are so powerful in it. And uh, I will say that uh, I've seen it three times. I'm going to see it again tonight. Yeah. But one of my favorite moments is uh, you in the second act and everybody lined up there and your beautiful singing is powerful and it brought the house down, especially even on opening night. Oh, thank you. Uh, it's a powerful song. It is. Absolutely. Simple, but it has a lot to say. It has a great message, you know, and especially in 2016. Right. To know that that was a piece that was written about a period in the in early 60s and to know that we are in 2016 and we're still dealing with those same issues. Yeah, amazing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's powerful to everyone that sits in that house every night. 1,800 strong sit there. And it's what they intended, John Waters intended for this piece to do, is help you examine who, what, and where you are in your life and how you view people around you. You know, and he's makes you think. done it in such a way that when you walk out of there, you've been educated and you feel good at the same time. Like you feel absolutely. enlightened and energized. It's the brilliance of John Waters. Right, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now let me back up for a second because just so everybody knows, and I could literally do the entire interview just reeling off your resume. Don't do that. But I'm not, but I do want to give a couple of <laughs> things. Like this woman is a, a six-time Jeff Award winner. You, are, you have four Black uh, Theater Alliance Awards, John Barrymore Award, two Helen Hayes Awards, uh, and you were inducted in 2012, I believe, in the National Women in the Arts Museum in Washington, D.C. Yeah. And the list goes on. And you've played everywhere from La Jolla Playhouse to, uh, which is in California, to Seattle Rep, regional mm -hmm. tours, national tours. I mean, this has been an amazing run of a career for you. Absolutely. I am very blessed to say I'm one of the few artists that uh, went to school for what I love. And I still do what I love every day when I wake up. I'm very blessed, and I know that. I know it's a gift from God, and I don't take it lightly and I treasure every moment of everything I get to do and every opportunity, and I like to pass it forward to the artists that I meet, especially the young artists. So this is a great thing, because I'm the elder states person in this yes, particular production. So it's nice to be in a production where I remember when I used to be the youngest, and now to be the oldest in a production, to be, pa to be able to pass on wisdom to anybody is a great thing, and that's what you want. That's what you want in a career. Because I think a career is more important than just being famous or just having a lot of stuff. To actually say you have a career yep. and you have a life and something that you love to do, that's a blessing. I've got to ask, and we were talking before uh, off camera, we're both from different parts of the south mm -hmm. side of Chicago, and where I come from, and probably you, not a lot of people uh, were in the arts. I didn't know no. anybody who was in plays or acting or right. singing, yeah, yeah, so yeah. how'd you end up doing this? My mother was a star, and my father were staunch believers that every weekend, and you remember this, people that are really from Chicago, you remember this. Every weekend, we went downtown on State Street where there was still Marshall Fields and 17 Restaurant and all of the movie theaters down there. And every week, my mother said we had to do something as a family together that was about the arts. If it was see a film at the art, um, at the Fine Arts Building, if it was go to a museum at the Art Institute, if it was to go to the opera, if it was go to the ballet, if it was to see a play at Drury Lane South, out south where we lived, Martinique, all of those things. My mother made sure to the library to hear, you know, little concerts, whatever. My mother made sure that we always did something that included something in the arts every week as a family unit. And a lot of it was free, and it's still free. But we have to remember what the family was like. I mean, you were saying that, Jim. Your family. You know, was that your, you did, we did things as a family yep. unit. And doing it's become together, the lost art. It's become the lost art, the family. What about taking our kids just for a walk to the zoo, to the park, to the library, read a book? That's what we did. Right. And that's what kind of fueled who I am and where, I, where I've gone is because of my mom and my father making sure that I had a well-rounded education. That's why I have the, hate that the arts are not prevalent in schools anymore. Because without art, where's the soul of a child? Right. You know? 
learning that penmanship. They took that out of school. I can't believe you can't write. I mean, I spent hours writing my name in cursor trying to figure <laughs> out what my signature would be. So I'm just saying, you know, so that's where it comes from. Now, uh, all the stuff I saw, you played Ella in Ella Fitzgerald, yeah. which, I mean, you've done some amazing roles, yeah. but I'm a huge Ella fan. Ooh, that was daunting. And I was going <laughs> to ask, but what was it like to play an icon like that, and especially it, it somebody was, at that level? I mean, it's... Yeah. It was an extremely daunting task, but I loved it. Um, and I was very fortunate that one of her former um, pianists and one of her writers took and wrote the entire, he did the entire score, every scat was written. So I li you literally had to scat last Ella every night. And not only that, but then I got to meet so many of the guys that played for her too. Oh my gosh. So I was really well informed and I really had a lot of love around me, but it was the most daunting and most difficult probably role I've ever had, because people know Ella. And I think the biggest um, coup for me was one night a man was sitting in the audience at North Light and they had a talk back. And I was sitting there answering questions and he said, I just want to say, Miss Fitzgerald, I saw you at the Sahara. You probably don't remember me. I was in the front row. And he goes on and on and I'm like, Wow. <laughs> Could you have anything better happen to you? You should just mic and drop and walk off that. Like, what I do you do after that? I never corrected him. Right. I never said, oh, you know, I just went, thank you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I was like, yes. And since you so. studied Ella, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, really one of the things, she, she, reasons she scattered was, number she one. She forgot the lyrics. Right. She would forget the lyrics. Yes. I, I heard she was painfully shy she at times. She was extremely she shy. She didn't like to talk. And right. then, number two, she would forget the lyrics. She would forget the lyrics. So she just developed this scat that became Ella. Right. And she did that because when she would forget the lyrics, it was usually because she becomes so engrossed in the instruments. So she felt like if I just listen and I'll just scat along with them, you don't need lyrics. And speaking of which, now we're getting on this Ella thing, but didn't she literally just stick herself in between all the musicians Oh, yeah, for she that never reason? liked to be in the front. Right, so she could hear everybody. She'd she sit was back right in the middle of it. In... She wanted it surrounding her. Yeah, that's so totally that So that she could cool. hear. So if she ever lost a lyric, she would just turn and start scatting. And one time when she was in Paris, she scatted for like 20 minutes. She never remembered the song. Wow. So if we hear Ife Butler scat in the middle of hairspray, <laughs> there's a safety tip. She's not channeling Ella. She just happened to forget the I lyric for the, the night. Lyric. <laughs> She's going to hit it. You got that right. So look, you guys are going to have a show tonight. We're going to let you get to dinner. But you have a sh something coming up on February 8th. Is that right. correct? Yes. So you want to talk about yes. that? Yes, so February 8th at North Light. I am doing a concert. It's a Monday night, 730. You can call the box office at North Light. It's me doing me. It's my cabaret. You love it. Ella, Dinah, Bessie Smith, a whole, you know, Judy Garland. Just a lot of music. Old music. I love music. So That's I do awesome. all of that. Well, yeah. look, you are uh, nothing but a pleasure to get to hang out with. You're amazing. And oh, we're thank so you. We're so excited that you're a part of this family. And it's good to family. be here. And it's yeah. the first time you've been with us. Yeah, Jim is a good friend of mine, and I'm glad I'm here. So Congratulations to everyone here, too. It's a thank, great space. Thank great, you. And thank great, you for great. being here. Thank you for being with us. Thank so you. come check out Ife Butler. Come see if she's going to scat. Check out the show. Yeah. Check out the show. See, uh, here's got spray. three weeks. Get here. See if she'll scat in the middle of it just in case. <laughs>